Okay, here's an example of a, a, a driven pile, single pile, in a cohesionless sand. Um, on the right here, you can see the pile's 12 metres deep and has a diameter of 0.5 of a metre. And relevant information is that it's in a medium dense sand. C equals 0, phi equals 36 degrees. Gamma dry is 20.5 kilonewtons per cubic metre. Poisson's ratio mu equals 0.4. The modulus, the elastic modulus of the soil is 35 megapascals and the elastic modulus of the pile is 12 gigapascals. The pile has a working load, the load it has to carry, of 600 kilonewtons. Okay, we're doing this to AS2159, the Australian piling code. And the code says in cohesionless material, a single pile, there's a limiting stress on the pile as we go with depth. It starts at zero, let me draw it in on the right here, it starts with zero and goes down to a certain depth, comes down at a constant limited stress and that depth where that occurs is termed ZL below the surface. Alright, so the first step in the design process we need to establish this ZL value and that comes from a table out of the code, this is the table um, we've got a driven pile you see this is piles in sand um, we're a medium dense soil phi is 36 so we're in this range um, we're a driven pile over here, so we, we've got to calculate this F value so that F equals 1, which we'll use in the equation later. That's here, and this ZL on D equals 8. So we're going to use that to work out that depth. So if, if um, ZL, that depth, equals 8 times D. D is the diameter. I said depth, sorry, the diameter equals 8 times 0 0.5 equals 4 metres. So the um, this ZL value up here equals 4 metres. So the stress on the pile starts at 0 on the surface comes down to a maximum at a depth of 4 metres and stays at that maximum all the way to the base of the pole. Alright, so the next step is to calculate this limited pressure on the shaft, which is this area here on the right. We know it starts at zero at the surface, comes down to this limiting area and then maintains that all the way down. We know gamma dry over here on the left is 20.5 kilonewtons per metre, so it's pretty easy, the limiting area equals 4 times 20.5, which equals 82 kilonewtons per square metre. So that's the size of the base of that triangle at the top there, this dimension here and it maintains that all the way down the shaft. The code doesn't let you continue up to really high stresses. It says you have to keep it down to that area. So our, our step here is uh, Q ultimate shaft, the pressure equals the sum of F sigma V times the area of the shaft. You've seen similar things this before. Because we've got two areas, we've got that triangle down to four meters and uniform stress below that. Q ultimate shaft, we'll do that triangle first, equals one F, up the top here of the page, we calculated F to be one, times 82 on two, 82 being this limiting pressure 
times 0.5 times 4 times pi, which is the area of the shaft down to that limiting depth of 4 metres, plus below that we have 1 again times the full 82, because it's rectangular we don't have to change it, times 0.5 times 8 times pi which equals 257.6 plus 1030.4 equals 1288 kilonewtons which is the capacity that the pile can handle in shaft adhesion. Alright, so now we're going to use two equations, going to start working on the base. Put it back on a pen. We'll have, um, there's two we're going to look at. Q ultimate base, which is just the straight ultimate capacity of the base, which equals, um, oh, what is it, C and C, plus Q and Q times the area of the base and the other one is from the code which is Q ultimate base limit so it's a limited base capacity that spells limit believe it or not which equals 50 NQ 10 phi times the area of the base. You'll note in the first one, our cohesion equals zero, so this part of the equation just disappears. And we're going to take the lower of these two values. So Q ultimate base equals, um, we calculated, I'll write them here, NQ. right above the equation here, NQ equals 190, it's the same as the bearing capacity, you just read them from graphs, and uh, so Q and Q equals 12 metres, the ultimate Q at depth is 12 metres times 20.5 times 190, and Q times pi, and what do we got for D? 0.5 squared on 4. We calculate that out, and that comes to 9896 kilonewtons. That's just the ultimate Q from the base of the pile sitting on the soil. And it's a lot like a bearing, just a straight bearing capacity equation. The other one is that the code says you you limit it, like we limited the shaft, using the equation uh, 50 times NQ 10 phi times the area of the base, which equals 50 times 190 times 10, 36 times pi times 0.5 squared on 4. Calculate all that out and that calculates out at 1365.2 kilonewtons. Okay, so the objective was to calculate both. And we can see we, we're going to work on the lower one of the two values, Q ultimate base here, 9896 kilonewtons, and the limited Q ultimate base, the second one we calculated, is 1365 kilonewtons. So the, the one we'll be working on, Q ultimate base, this is our design value, equals 1365. 
sorry. Just point there. One three six five point two kilonewtons. Now we just got to combine these two together in summary. Q ultimate shaft. We calculated before, which equals we go back up to it. That was here. One, two, eight, eight, the combination of the two equals one, two, eight, eight kilonewtons. Q ultimate base. We just calculated one three six five point two kilonewtons. I'll include the point two. Therefore, our um, Q ultimate overall for the pile is the sum of those. Just let me calculate it. One two eight eight plus. 1365.2 equals 2653.2 kilonewtons, which is the ultimate capacity this pile can carry to the code. Okay, now we just need to work out the percentages of each of them. So, um, Q ultimate shaft. equals 1288 divided by 2653.2 which equals, I'll multiply it by 100 just to make it a bit clearer equals 48.5% is carried by shaft adhesion and Q ultimate base equals 1365.2 I keep putting the decimal point in the wrong place don't I? fix it up 1365.2 divided by the total ultimate 2653.2 by 100 equals 51.5% now we were told at the start that the pile has a working load of 600 kilonewtons. Therefore, of that working load, Q ultimate shaft equals 600 times 0 0.485 this value we calculated up here equals hopefully I calculated 600 by 0.485 equals 291 kilonewtons and Q ultimate base equals 600 times 51.5 0 0.515 600 by 0.515 equals 309 kilonewtons so that's the part the components of the working load that are carried by each of the two load carrying mechanisms the shaft adhesion and the base Okay, now, now we'll be required to calculate the total settlement of this pile. There's three components. There's, and I'll go through it, it'll be a bit slow, but deformation of the pile shaft. So this is actual deformation of the concrete, compression of the concrete, an elastic component, and that's delta 1. The next one is the settlement from base load, so settlement of the soil under the load from the base, which is delta 2. The third one is settlement from 
the shaft blade, which is delta three. So there's three components and we'll need to go through and calculate each one and add them up at the end. All right, so we'll look at delta one. Remembering this is just the pure deformation of that concrete column that is the pile. And this is a formula for it, delta one. QW base is the working load on the base. We calculated that up here before is 309 kilonewtons plus whoever knows what that Greek letter is we'll call it a wobbly E for the sake of it times QW shaft we calculated at 291 times the length of the pile divided by the area of the base times the modulus of the pile alright so this, curve, this value this funny E is a function that's the shape of the the load on the pile and in our case it's pretty well a rectangular load it's a bit of a truncation at the top and for that it equals 0.5 for a semicircular load it equals 0.5 the only time it really changes is it's triangular but in 99.9% .9 of the cases that value will be um, will equal 0.5 so let's go on through and calculate it our QW base is 309 plus 0.5 times the shaft which is 291 times L which is the length of the pile times 12 meters divided by the area of the base pi times 0.5 squared on 4 times 12 by 10 to the 6 which is the modulus of the concrete of the pile and all that calculates out to 1.9 millimeters all right now we'll look at delta 2 that's the settlement from the pile base load so it's like a bearing capacity formula where we've got this circular base of the pile and we want the settlement that's going to occur during the work due to the working load on the pile and that's QW base, which is that working load on the pile, that component of the working load on the base. D times the diameter of the pile divided by the area of the base times the modulus of the soil. Times 1 minus mu squared, which is Poisson's ratio squared, times I. And I is an influence factor, similar to what we looked at previously with Boos and S things. Um, I equals 0.88 for anything that's circular or square. So if the width is about the same as the depth, it's square or it's circular, I equals 0.88. It's different, obviously, if something's rectangular, um, but then I suppose you just have a deep footing and, and you do a normal calculation for a, a deep footing. So QW base, equals 309.5 times d which is 0.5 times pi 0.5 squared on 4 the area of the base times the modulus of the soil was given at 35,000 uh, 35 megapascals times 1 minus 0.4 Poisson's ratio was given times 0 0.88 this influence factor for the shape of the pile. Just go through and calculate it all out and that comes out to 16.6 millimetres which is the settlement at the base of the pile from the load on the base of the pile. All right and the final one is the settlement from the shaft load, the load that's on the shaft of the pile. Uh, again, you're given all these equations and all this influence factor information. In this case, del delta 3, the, the settlement from the shaft, equals the working load of the shaft, QW shaft, divided by the area of the shaft, this one here, times the diameter of the pile divided by the modulus of the soil, all given, times 1 minus Poisson's ratio squared, given, 
And now we have this influence factor for the size of the shaft. The influence factor for this, again, is provided equals 2 plus 0.35 times the square root of L on D equals 2 plus 0.3 times the square root of 12 divided by 0 0.5 which equals 3.71 so that's the I we plug in here into this equation so let's go through and work it out and see how it works delta 3 equals um, the load that was distributed to the shaft earlier divided by pi times 0.5 times 12 the area of the shaft times 0.5 diameter of the pile on the modulus of the soil 35 MPa times 1 minus 0.4 squared times the influence factor which we calculated at 3.71. Calculate all that out and our delta 3, the settlement from the load on the shaft to the pile equals 0 0.7 millimetres. So now in summary, delta 1, delta 2 and delta 3 which worked out to delta 1 at the top there was 1.9 millimetres delta 2 was 16.6 millimetres and delta 3 was 0 0.7 millimetres and all we've got to do to work out the total settlement of the pile is just add all those up 1.9 plus 16.6 plus 0 0.7 so total settlement we can say total settlement equals 19.2 millimeters and that's the final answer so we've worked out the the load the pile can carry the component of the working load that's going to be carried by each of them and then the settlement of the three things the the um, deformation of the concrete pile shaft the settlement at the base of the pile and the settlement from the shaft load on the whole pile and that is the pile design in cohesionless soil to the Australian piling code